I'm gonna get so many followers. Oh, yeah. Never, never doing that again. I'm never doing that again. Hi everyone, it's Charlie. This is gonna be my Spider-Man Far From Home post credit scene and video for the ending. There's so many big things that they set up. There are two post credit scenes. Hopefully you've had a chance to see the movie. If you're brand new to the channel, we're still doing that IMAX ticket giveaway. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber and leave a Spider-Man comment on the video. If for some reason you have not seen the movie yet, careful for spoilers. There will be rampant spoilers because we'll be talking about the end of the movie and all the post credits. So starting at the end of the movie, Spider-Man manages to get back his Spidey sense, which Aunt May affectionately names the Peter Tingle earlier in the movie. It turns into a big joke. So using his Spidey sense, he's able to defeat Mysterio's very real illusions that they're creating with a combination of Iron Man's BARFing technology, which we learned earlier Mysterio himself created when he was still working for Tony Stark. He's a former Stark Tech employee that got fired. He combined that technology with weaponized drones created by the scientist from Iron Man 1 in a big callback. He was the person that got yelled at by Obadiah Stane for being incompetent. Tony Stark was able to build this in a cave with a box of scraps. So quick Mysterio explainer, just like in the comics, he was lying about everything and he's the master of illusion, but the way they create the illusions is just a little bit different. When Quentin Beck was still working for Tony Stark, his life's work was what became the BARFing technology. Tony fired him after he lost his shit during a Captain America Civil War flashback to the scene where he's talking to his parents as a child using the technology. So Mysterio feels like he trashed his life work and that's what his big vendetta is. My life's work and he names it BARF. He gathers a team of other people from Stark Industries that were either fired or people that hated Tony Stark and they create what becomes Mysterio's big plan during the movie. The whole MacGuffin of the movie was the Edith glasses, which are sort of a backdoor to all of Iron Man's weaponry and technology all over the world. So when Spider-Man is about to take the glasses back, Mysterio says that he has contingency plans because he senses that Peter is going to defeat him. Peter seemingly watches him die with his own eyes, thinking that it's real because his Spidey sense doesn't go off and the Edith AI system tells him that there are no active illusions. But Mysterio does two things as part of his contingency plans. He one, records and edits special footage of their fight to make it look like Spider-Man was the villain the whole time. And two, secretly, I think the idea is that Mysterio used practical effects, not illusions, to fake his death, sleight of hand to trick Spider-Man's spidey sense and so that no illusions would be detected. But the movie doesn't answer that question, so if Quentin Beck is still alive out there, we won't find out till a future movie, but I think the idea is that he is and he would return for Sinister Six action in a later film. But then Spider-Man and MJ go back to New York City with everyone. He confronts Aunt May and Happy about their relationship. They're kind of a thing during the movie. They play it for comedy. Like they just say, well, we're friends with benefits. We'll see where it goes. He takes MJ web slinging through New York City. They have a funny scene of her just freaking out. Oh, we're never going to do that again. Totally crazy. But then as he's getting ready to leave, a news broadcast starts about their final fight and they air the fake footage making Spider-Man look like a villain. This is the first mid credit scene. It's very important, not quite as big as the second post credit scene for Marvel Phase 4 stuff, but this definitely teases something that's going to be happening during Marvel Phase 4. During the footage, Mysterio looks into camera and obviously he's faking everything, saying Spider-Man attacked me for no reason. He says that he's the only one who's going to succeed Iron Man, all of this belongs to him, and it makes it look like Spider-Man orders this giant drone attack. If you're a big fan of Tobey Maguire era, you're going to love this next part too, because then it was revealed that J. Jonah Jameson of the DailyBugle.net is the person who screened the video and gave it to the news service. And it's J.K. Simmons back doing J. Jonah Jameson in the MCU. I want that ball crawling arachnid prosecuted. I want him strung up by his web. I want Spider-Man. They change it a little bit so it's more of an Alex Jones conspiracy person spin on what he's doing with the Daily Bugle. That just feels like it's updated for a more contemporary environment. So he's doing more video hit pieces on Spider-Man instead of traditional newspapers because not that many people read traditional newspapers anymore. So he just looks a little bit different but it's the same basic idea. He's going to start running a bunch of hit pieces on Spider-Man. Spider-Man is terrible. Everyone should hate him. JJ says that Mysterio is probably the greatest hero that the world has ever seen. He tries to make him sound like he was even better than Iron Man at the end of Avengers Endgame. 
Then there's a second part to Mysterio's video where Mysterio outs Peter Parker's secret identity as Spider-Man, putting his picture up for the world to see. So the entire world knows now that Peter Parker is Spider-Man. Spider-Man slaps his face and has the same WTF reaction that Aunt May had. It's the exact same line that she had at the end of Spider-Man Homecoming when she walked in on him getting into costume and found out that he was Spider-Man. WTF! I assume that J.K. Simmons, J. Jonah Jameson, will be a bigger character during Spider-Man 3. They haven't announced what the story for that is, but this mid credit scene is basically a teaser for the biggest problem that he's going to be facing going into that next Spider-Man film. Is, is it how is he going to deal with this now that all of his villains are going to call open season on Peter Parker, Spider-Man? They all know who he is so they can find out where he lives, where his friends live, they can come after Aunt May now, which is exactly what happened in the comics during Marvel Civil War when he publicly outed himself as Spider-Man. It's right out of the comics. What ended up happening after that too is that they had to do the One More Day storyline. The only way for Peter to save Aunt May from dying because someone had finally gotten to her was to go to Mephisto, broker a deal, which wound up erasing his relationship with Mary Jane. Now, obviously, they're not going to do one more day in the movies. It'll be a little bit different. But remember the Spider-Man Homecoming post credit scene with Scorpion and Vulture? Scorpion wanted Vulture to tell him Spider-Man's secret identity. Now he doesn't need to. He can see it on the news. So this just paves the way for a Sinister Six movie later on, whether that's going to be Spider-Man 3 or it's going to be some other movie after that. We don't know how long it's going to take to get to Sinister Six, but this is setting the stage for a more Dark Reign type of territory because, yes, Nick Fury has stuff going on in the other post credit scene that I'll talk about in a second, but the world still needs another Iron Man figure. That role is still empty because Mysterio just poisoned the world against Spider-Man. The second post credit scene I think is even bigger for the future of Marvel Phase 4. They played it for comedy, so I think that a lot of people didn't pay too much attention to what was happening, especially at the very end of it. But they revealed that Nick Fury and Maria Hill had been scrolls this whole time, the entire movie, every time you saw them, they were scrolls masquerading as those two. It was Talos and his wife from the Captain Marvel movie that had come back. They even foreshadowed it at the beginning of the movie in the opening scene and a couple times thereafter. The first time they have dialogue, Maria Hill calls Nick Fury Nick. Everybody calls me Fury. Not Nicholas, not Joseph, not Nick. Just Fury. What does your mom call you? Fury. What do you call her? Fury. What about your kids? If I have them, they'll call me Fury. Nobody calls him Nick. Everyone calls me Fury. That should be the first giveaway that they're not the real Maria Hill and Nick Fury. Then later when Mysterio is explaining the multiverse to Spider-Man for the first time, Nick Fury says he's from Earth, just not yours, instead of saying our Earth. So as they're driving away, Talos talks to his wife about how upset he is that Mysterio was able to fool him with all these illusions, a shapeshifter. It's embarrassing. They call Nick Fury and tell him that he has to come back because things just went completely off the rails. And you learn the only reason that they were supposed to be pretending to be Nick Fury and Maria Hill was because he asked them to execute the final part of Tony Stark's will. Give the Iron Man glasses to Spider-Man. That's all they were supposed to do. They weren't supposed to get involved with any of this Mysterio stuff. So Talos is admitting to completely messing up the situation with Nick Fury being off on vacation. They reveal that he's on a beach, but the beach is actually an illusion itself. Just another wink at the whole Mysterio plot with the illusions. And he's been taking a short vacation break on a giant space station in orbit that looks like the sword station from the comics, as if they're teasing sword for Marvel Phase 4. Another indicator that this is actually the sword space station from the comics, he yells everyone as if he's in charge, tells them to get back to work, and who's seen my shoes? Because he's walking around without shoes on. The reason why that's a big deal is, is because sword teases very big cosmic threats that Nick Fury is preparing for. Shield was designed to deal with Earth-based threats emanating from Earth. Sword is all about dealing with bigger cosmic threats. The Annihilators, the Celestials, characters like Galactus, any big space-based fleet or threat you want to think of. So that feels very much like a Marvel Phase 4 wink, and it's a big reference to his very first post credit scene at the end of the first Iron Man film, teasing the Avengers Initiative. You're part of a bigger world, Stark, and he's getting ready to tell him about the Avengers. So it's sort of a bookend to his original post credit scene, but also setting up the next big team that he'll put together. The next Avengers team, there's been rumors about them doing an Ultimates team. That would be something that they would do on that space station. They even have a couple of cosmic teasers during the movie. There's a teaser for Nova when they're doing all the movies on the airplane. 
The joke is, is that the world has developed movies and television shows and documentaries to talk about the things that have happened the last couple of years. So there's a movie about the snap. There's a movie called Finding Wakanda. There's a movie called Hunting Hydra. There's a Nova documentary with Eric Selbig teasing the Nova character, obviously. And then there's an Iron Man one called Heart of Iron. So even though it's meant to be a very funny scene, Talo saying, I'm sorry, Nick Fury, I kind of screwed up. Even though I gave the glasses to the kids, things got kind of dicey. It's actually doing way, way bigger things for the future of the MCU. I know you have a thousand other questions about Norman Osborn, Sinister Six, Green Goblin, all the other big Spider-Man villains that they might do within the Spider-Man films, and then all the other big Marvel Phase 4 stuff that they teased during the movie. So there'll be a bunch more Easter egg videos this week. If there's any really big questions that you want me to make videos for, just let me know in the comments. But congratulations to Ab Gamers. You're the giveaway winner for my last big Marvel video. Please email me on the about page of my channel so I can get your details. Click here for that brand new Avengers Endgame post credit scene from the re-release. And click here for that brand new Shazam Black Adam deleted scene. Thank you so much for watching. Everybody stay awesome. I'll see you guys tonight.